Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. I am Brian Huntress. I'm Theodora Earthworms. And this is the episode. Woo. So anyway, we gotta get you a new pair of shorts. Some studio shorts. Hmm. Do I have a celebrity you look alike? Do you? Yeah. Bam Margera. You know that. That sucks. He was kind of hot when he was younger. Young Bam Margera. Hmm. You don't look like current Bam Margera. Maybe if I did my beard the exact same way that he used to do his, like, that, like, horrible early 2000s, like, <laughs> goatee that he had. Yeah. Not the mustache era. Like, it was fine when he had the mustache. But when it was just a chin, like a chin goatee uh, with no mustache, bad. That's a bad look. Mm, Yeah. Sorry to anybody listening that has no mustache and a goatee. I'm not sorry. It's okay if you're like 50. No mustache and a goatee? Yeah, like if you're like an older dude and you're doing goatee, no mustache, that's okay. But if you're the same age as us and you're doing no mustache, goatee, maybe rethink that. You Unless you, like, drive a motorcycle or you, like, are a member of Disturbed. I'm trying to picture what somebody would look like. Like, hmm. like if you're, if you, like, I personally think that all facial hair has to include a mustache. So, I like, think Like, you can really, have a mustache with no beard. Yeah. You cannot well, have beard with no mustache. It really, really depends on the person's face. Because some people that go mustache, no beard, look fucking awful. Some of them look really good. It really depends on your, like... It de- what does it even depend on? It depends on the rest of your facial shape, I think. And how thick your mustache is. Like, if you have a really thick mustache and, like, a round head and no other facial hair, it looks bad. It looks fake. Wait, Some if you have, have, like, an egg head, egg circle head and I mustache? I didn't say egg circle head. Um, but no, if you have, like, a... Like, if you have a strong jaw or you have, like, five o'clock shadow face... Or you have, like, not a super thick mustache. It doesn't look, like, fake, you know? But if you're the kind of person that has, like, a baby face and you happen to grow a really thick mustache like and you Ned shave Flanders. your rest of your face, yeah, that's fucked up. I like that. I think no. that's a good look. No, it's not. I support people with the Flan- Ned Flanders I vibe. don't. I'm, I'm against them. Well, people who <laughs> have a beard and no mustache, what they end up looking like, to me... Is they either have like a early two thousands new metal vibe, okay, which is not the best vibe. If you have you're to be not, a really specific you, kind of person. Literally, to off. if you're not a fifty year old man, you shouldn't look like a new metal guy. <laughs> That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Or you look like Bigfoot, because <laughs> like that's how people depict like Bigfoot whenever he's like in having something. a goatee and no mustache. No, 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 having like a big forehead. Like a lion, like a mane, kind of like where he's got hair, like a beardly hair and hair on the top of his head and all over him, uh-huh. but none on his face. Really? Yeah. Like I feel like that's like a like if you just googled Bigfoot, it would be something like that. All of the depictions I can think of off the top of my head of Bigfoot are like Chewbacca esque, where he has, just has hair everywhere. That's actually more no. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. But like nobody like has a gorilla Bigfoot. face, kind of. Yeah. Bigfoot? Nobody like that's a, that's yeah. another thing. Like monkeys and shit. Very few primates have mustaches. Well, humans wouldn't just have a mustache either. You have to shave. Like, I don't see monkeys, like, going yeah, but for they don't facial have, hair They style. have chin and neck hair and head hair, but they don't have hair that goes onto their face. Like, the monkeys have eyebrows? What the fuck? <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Look that up right now. Look up monkey eyebrows. Dude, you know what we should do? We should go to the Franklin Park Zoo and record a podcast episode while we're there. I want to go anyway, but we could update. We could, do, nice a, we could do a research day. That's a nice idea. On monkey brows. Also, just, just I think that, that you're wrong. Right I think that some monkeys do have mustaches. So first look up monkeys, monkey with eyebrows <laughs> or monkey eyebrow or whatever. Monkey eyebrows question mark? <laughs> okay. That's acceptable. Oh, monkeys totally have eyebrows. Look, here's an article. It says top 17 animals that have eyebrows. Well, it's on it's, Animal Kooky. If you're they're wondering. not the same as ours. They more just have like a unibrow, hairy, like a hairy unibrow ridge. All right. Like it's more of a hairy brow ridge. Okay, like they have a hairy chimpanzee? forehead. This chimpanzee has pronounced a brow ridge, but he has a little bit of fuzz on his eyebrow ridge. It's Ooh, different. Oh my god, head. bro. Idiot. Oh. 
literally pass away. I'm kidding, sorry. <laughs> Oh I God. almost said something way worse than what I did say. Anyway, I can. I that can was imagine that, what you that were chimp say. though didn't have eyebrows. He had peach fuzz eyebrows. You know, it probably really sounded like he almost just crashed a car because you were looking at a picture of a chimpanzee. But I can testify that that wasn't what happened. Basically, that person just pulled out into the road without looking behind them from a parking spot. They just while decided. they were looking at a photo of a chimpanzee. So really dangerous time for them to do that. I didn't even look at it. Like I peeked. <laughs> like I glanced very, Good thing you glanced It took like a millisecond I would have just killed that car Um What? Okay No now uh, not, I'm up, not advising that I'm saying Now look up happened. Monkey with mustache Alright And whoa, if it has a mustache whoa. Skateboard And if it has a mustache It will have a beard as well Monkey with mustache Alright what kind of monkey is that? Oh, that's a very specific type of... It's an emperor tamarind. So Look emperor, it up right now emperor if you don't tamarind know that is. definitively is a mustachioed monkey. And he has a beard. Okay, so there is at least one exception. <laughs> People also ask, what is the monkey with the mustache called? <laughs> uh, emperor tamarind. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now just look up Sasquatch. All right. And you'll see what I meant about, like, the no mustache beard look. I feel like... He does have. Well, this is a very specific iteration, but he That's does a have really beard hi- and mustache. Fuck. That's a really high budget Bigfoot uh, look. That's from an article in the Atlantic. Okay. Well, most footages of Sasquatch just look like this. Like you don't know like what the, the fuck. Like the blurry dance move pose. Yeah. All right. So maybe my whole. Or this one. Maybe my whole thing's wrong. Yeah. See, no mustache. You're right. He looks like he has the face of a chimpanzee. But he looks like a guy with like long, crazy hair. So you and look a at beard. a chim- look at a chimpanzee. No mustache, no beard. Well, I guess it depends. And a on hairy how. forehead. Oh, this is really cute. That's a baby chimpanzee, but he looks like an old man still. See, that looks like a guy wearing a morph suit. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it look like somebody wearing a morph suit? No. Do you know what, what a morph suit is? Yeah, I know what a morph suit is, but no, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't look like a human being because it obviously looks like a, like a monkey. Well, you said it looked like a guy wearing a morph suit. <sighs> no matter what you say, Do I Do you disagree. have to argue with me about everything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will right. always play devil's advocate, okay? And right now, I'm this chimpanzee's advocate. And he looks really cute. Do you think that I'm an Ethan Hawke type? What does that mean? Like, if you were a casting director, would you be like, oh yeah, Brian Huntress, Ethan Hawke type? No. Really? What is? The, were you looking for me to say yes? I don't know. I would was you cast looking Ethan for an object, objective answer. Who would you cast in a movie about me? To play you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like I know enough, like... Hyper contemporary actress names. Anybody, if you could, uh, like, time period doesn't matter. Well, t- if time period doesn't matter, the obvious answer is Young Winona Ryder. Fuck yeah! Okay, nice. But if time period did matter, like, she could play you later in life, obviously, because she's like, like a, you know, a, an adult, like a middle aged woman. Yeah, I'm not an adult woman. Well, you're not, like, 55 <laughs> years old, That's so true. it would make no sense for somebody who was 55 to play you. <laughs> Unless it was, like, an end-of-life end of, end of life bi- biopic, then maybe she could play, like, the later-in-life you I feel like that I will don't exist look like, in the future. I feel like I kind of don't look like how Winona Ryder looks right now, though. I feel like I look like young Winona Ryder, not because of her being young, but because of how she's styled. Well, like, dyed black hair Winona Ryder. Yeah... Also, I now that I'm like really thinking about her, I don't know if you guys have the same face face structure because the styling was definitely similar. Yeah, it might have been that actually. Because hmm. I, I feel like you have you? a smaller face. Yeah. Like you have a small face. I do have a small face. Hmm. I wonder if there's anybody that listens that coincidentally has never seen pictures of us. Oh my god! If there is anybody 
that don't wants just to just do... don't look. Just can just let the illusion of what you think we look like. Oh, I want someone forever. to do fan art of us so bad. I would be so happy if someone did that. I would post it on all my social media, and I would send you. However no, much we money would just, I could afford at the time. Would Probably say, like 20 bucks. No, we would say thank you. That's sick. If it was Hell really yeah, good, bro. I would probably send you. Why would you send them money? I don't know. I really <laughs> want someone to do it. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys heard it. Do it if that's what type of uh, person you are. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm not going to send everybody 20 bucks, though. I only have one 20 bucks to give away, so. Yo, you know what stresses Raffle. me out? Theor- what? I almost just called you Theory. Theory? That's a new one. Hey, Theory. <laughs> My favorite mis- misnaming that I've ever witnessed happen to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a funny way, not in like a... In like a fucked up way? Not in a fucked up way or anything, yeah. but... This is probably fine to name this person. <laughs> Sam, what is the story <laughs> no, you're about maybe, to tell? Maybe I, no, it's not, a, it's not a story, but it was just the guy who, who literally just called you Etho. When did that happen? I forgot about that. It was just in passing, but Etho. it was someone we interviewed just said, oh, yeah, Etho. Oh, I remember this. Etho. And I was like... <laughs> like, what? I was like, that is just, like, I could see where you would, like, I could see how that could happen visually, like, with, like, your name written down, because that is literally an anagram of Theo. <laughs> but it's just so interesting to imagine that somebody mispronounced your name as an anagram. <laughs> like they just made yeah, a good. they anagrammed your name into a new name. What I love about that, that too, visually is similar to the Theo Etho. Like it. What I, I really love it. about that is that it wasn't in any way offensive either. It was just bizarre. Like I was taken. <laughs> I was just taken aback, and then I completely did not acknowledge it. <laughs> I just went like, yeah. Crazy. It would have been so fucking awkward if you did. Like, <laughs> excuse me, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> Because I get, I get <laughs> Thea a lot. I've had Thea? people say to me in, like, customer service roles, be like, Theo's a boy's name. Your name Thea? And I'm like, no. And they're like, Thea. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so that pisses me off. But most of them aren't that bad. Today I got a really fun one. I told you this already, but I was at Starbucks. And um, I got um, a little chai latte and I got a little piece of pumpkin bread. Yum. And, yeah, it was great. And um, they wrote my name Thebo. Thebo. But not... Like there were there were, there no, were no vowels. vowels. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was like, my name's Theo, and he was like Thea, and I was like Theo, T H E O, and he goes, all right, T H B O, Thebo, and then when my drink came up, they yelled Thebo, and I was like, that's me, thank you. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> I wasn't really offended by that either, though. I was just like, wow. One time, somebody called me the wrong name, but they just called me Brad. <laughs> and I was like, that's so, this has never happened to me in my life. And I don't really, it's like fine that this happened, but it's just so random. <laughs> I feel like Brian is a pretty hard name to fuck up. Well, if you didn't know me at all, and I said, oh yeah, my name is Brian. And then you instantly forgot, and you tried to remember, I could see how you could, how you would get to Brad. Yeah. <clears throat> I used to tell people to try to. I, I would go, my name's Ryan. Like, they'd be like, Ryan? Ryan? And I'd be like, Brian? Ryan with a B. And then they'd say B-R-Y-A-N. Yeah, and then I'd be like, they'd think it had a Y in it. And then I was like, uh, see, now we're phonetically in the right place. But my name does not have a Y. And that's a uh, uh, low-quality <laughs> way to spell my name. I was at work the other day. Low-quality And naming. somebody came out to the counter and was like, when you look up my membership, my name is Brian, B-R-I-A-N. And I was like, no shit. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, if you're, you're Brian just... with a Y and you spell it, understandable. If, you're just, if your name oh, is but, Brian... But you feel like the default is with an I. I feel like that. It's definitely more common. Like, I, I meet significantly more Brians with an I. I feel like people with common names always spell their name for you. Like, they come up to you and you're like, my name's Kate, K-A-T-E. Or my name's Tom, T-O-M. It's like, do you think I'm a fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs> like, how was I gonna spell it? <laughs> Tom. T-O-H-M-E. T-A-M. Tom. Tam. Tom. T-A-H-M. <laughs> Tom. Tom. <laughs> Damn, G-Unit. Oh my god. It's um, lavender bush season. I love it so much. 
You know what's something I say in my head a lot? What? I don't know why, but I just say G a lot. Like when I'm just referring to some a person. Damn, G. Yeah, or like thanks, G. Like I don't say that to people, but I say that privately. <laughs> Like, online, like, in my head. Like, I yeah. say G in my head all the time when referring to people, <laughs> but I feel too awkward to actually say that, so I kind of don't as much. Is that why you just go, thanks? Are you thinking G? Yeah, like, see, that's, <laughs> an, that's a thing. Like, when the waiter brings you food, you do not want to say, thanks, G. Why not? Because that would be so weird. I feel like it's less weird than when you go, thanks, See, that's something that you have, you have pointed out and then Trevor corroborated as being true. It actually isn't that weird. It was but just really I, funny. I love when you do it because I think you're hilarious. But if somebody did that to me and I was a waiter, I wouldn't notice probably. I consider it... I feel like it's like being hyper cordial. Did I drive past the beach? No, I'll keep going. Oh, okay. What did you say, speaking of um, this conversation, when we were at... This was on a previous episode, but I still think it's really funny. We were at the, uh, we were Grasshopper, and the waiter came over. What did you say to him that was making us laugh? Oh, I said, You're thank like, you. Th- that, this is very good. <laughs> or I said, like, thank you. This looks great. This looks very good. Or I said, I don't know. Well, that's what, like, the thing is, is, like, I, I feel like when I'm in a position where I'm, like, I don't want to say NPC because I don't want to. I don't mean that in a dehumanizing way. But when I'm performing a basic service for somebody, or just like having a mandatory interaction with a person, yeah, I personally feel like it's flustering and annoying and and del- and like kind of disruptive to the vibe to throw in extra shit and to try to fucking talk to the person and ask for their opinion and like. Mm. Like, I just do, like, complete the fucking interaction. I'll have this one. Thank you. Here's the money. Looks great. Bye. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's just better to be that be that way because I feel like I don't want, I don't want to be overstimulated. I don't want to overstimulate this person. Yeah. I don't want to stress them out. I don't want to be stressed. Let's complete this within the rules that have been set out for us by the by world society, yeah like society enables us to just say thanks here's the money i'll take this great job here's a 20 percent tip bye i can see that Th- that's definitely not a bad no thing. more i am usually not okay well it depends if i'm the one that's in the customer service role and it's a random person talking to me um usually i also do that i just kind of autopilot it but if that person wants to strike up a conversation that can be fine it really yeah. depends on what it is well have you ever been out to dinner with somebody and they're like talking to the waiter they're like oh what's your name like what's yeah. your favorite thing on the menu like which one do you think we should get like what do you like to eat yeah fuck that i'm like stop nobody wants stop to, nobody <laughs> wants to have like a really long detailed conversation about their opinions on what they're selling to you because they're gonna lie they don't really want to talk to you about it. Unless it's like you actually asking a product question or something. That's one thing. But if you're just like, what's your favorite thing to eat here? It's like, whatever no, they give me for free. No, I don't no, know. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> like, eat stuff the off up. the plate when I'm bussing tables. <laughs> oh, I missed that. Uh, <laughs> hey, you I know what's that. funny? What? What, what? what did you eat when you did that? Like, what kind of, would it be like a, like a chicken nugget? No. It would be like, what, as, I don't know if I want to... I haven't waitressed in well, that many places. Well, what genre of food? Like, what was it? It was a sushi restaurant. A sushi, okay. This was also pre-COVID. I don't know if I would do this now. <clears throat> but Excuse at the time, me. people would come in, and they'd be in, like, business meetings and shit, and they would buy, um, like, $300 worth of sushi, like, really expensive platters. Everybody would take a little bit and put it on their plate. That's another thing, is you would get serving plates and then take your own portion. It wasn't, like, eating off of someone's eating plate. It was eating off of the Oh, manual. yeah, sushi's like that sometimes. Yeah, so it was, like, taking things out of a platter that people were using utensils to take things off of. And then they left, like, $200 worth of brand-new fish we're going to have to throw in the trash on the plate. And it's like, obviously I'm going to fucking eat that. What the hell? I would eat it, too. Yeah. I might different. even eat that in COVID. Probably, yeah. If mm. I was working in a restaurant, I might... Mm. Um, yeah This is one of the first times we've recorded at the beach Where it wasn't winter Yeah, it's really nice We usually right record now. at the beach And it's like freezing cold And you don't want to open the door well, I feel like we get good episodes on foggy days at the beach Yeah Do you want to walk up the beach? 
That might be kind of nice. I think it might be a situation like last time, though, where it isn't hot out. Like, it is windy. It's like that wet, wet wind. Yeah. That, like, humid wind. You didn't bring your sweater? Yeah, I don't have... I idiotically just only have shorts and a t-shirt. I have my coat. Yeah, it won't fit me, though. You could put it over your shoulders like a little coat. Like Like a a little little tiny coat. Or I could just put my arms inside of my shirt and look like like one of those types. You should carry the coat on your shoulders because it's a sub-zero coat, so it would be too hot if you were actually wearing it. But if it's on your shoulders like a little cape, it would be perfect for you. How come in my car and in my room you have, like, infinite clothes and articles of clothing, but when I'm in one of your spaces or in your car, I'm, like, like, I might as well, like, have, like, be a monk with no possessions. Because when I go to your house, I bring a duffel bag full of, like, toiletries and outfits and, like, other pairs of socks and sketchbooks and everything I might need. And when you come to my house, you put two pairs of socks in your pockets. And also, you only own, like, seven things. I have, like, I have, like, ten shirts. Ten items. <laughs> Like total. I have, like, two pairs of pants. If you subtracted all of your art-related items, like all of your tchotchkes and painting things... What the things, hell is a tchotchke? Like a random little item. Does that mean, like, knick-knack? Yeah. I've never heard that word. Oh, we've all Googled it. It's a thing. Oh. But um, if you got rid of all your little sculptures and art things and, like, art paraphernalia, how many items would you own? Probably, like, ten. Nothing. I wouldn't really have anything. Yeah, that's why you have no pants in my house. How many pairs of pants do you even have? I literally have, like, three, like, good pairs of pants. What does good mean? Well, good means they, like, fit. They (laughs) actually fit. Like, I have other pants. Like, I have a couple others that are, like, emergency only that are, like, too fucking tight or they, like, the zipper is fucked up. You know, know, the ones that you're saying fit and aren't fucked up, do those include the ones that I sewed? Yes, actually. Because I didn't do a good job. Visually, they don't look good. Like the the so to describe it, the zipper is completely broken, so it doesn't zip up or down. And I the fly it. where the zipper would be is just stitched over. And I didn't stitch it like along the seam. I stitched it sideways intentionally to get you to buy new pants, and you just didn't. Wait, you did a bad job aesthetically, so that I wouldn't See? rely on it permanently. Yes, and I told you that when I did it. I forget. I forgot. Yeah, because it was a year ago. And I personally, I think that it looks pretty bad. <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel awkward when I wear them sometimes. Because I, I feel like Because I feel like they draw attention to, like, my crotch. I use, like, white thread, too. Yeah, like, like they thread. look weird when I wear them because I, like, have a stitched up zipper situation happening. Well, your zipper is supposed to be functional. Like, it can't yeah, be comfortable obviously. for you to just pull them up when you can't unzip them. Eh, it's fine. I don't know. Do you know how much pair of jeans the Savers is? I don't. I like, dude. Like, I'm I'm frugal, dog. Okay, but how long would you keep a pair of jeans if you bought a new pair? If I bought a brand new pair, yeah, I'd probably have them for a couple of years. So let's say you kept them for five years, right? Yeah. Say you spent ten bucks on them. <laughs> okay. Three hundred and sixty-five times five, one thousand eight hundred and twenty-five days. Um. Yes. But I would have a pair of pants. Ten dollars divided by one thousand eight hundred sixty-five days. It would be um, zero point zero zero five cents per day. To wear the pair of pants every day for a thousand and fifty-five days. For um, I get your point. Five years. I get your point that it would be very affordable. It would be less than a penny per day. Yeah, but who is paying any amount of money on any given day to wear pants? People, if you think about it that way, a lot of people. I buy, like, probably, like, $300 of new clothes every season. That's fucked. But I buy them from Savers, so it's, like, a whole new wardrobe every, like, month. See, I respect that because you look good all the time, and I like your outfits. Actually, that's probably not true. I've been wearing the same clothes for a while. No, you you have some consistent pieces, but you definitely have a vastly updated situation like it is true i can vouch for that every few months you have a pretty pretty i try to keep it so that my clothes are like nice looking like if they are stained or there's like a ton of paint on them or something (sighs) i might keep it for my studio but like what i try and wear to work and stuff is like clean and usually kind of trendy and i usually give the stuff away that i don't wear 
to like friends or something. The other day, one of my shirts that I wear all the time, I accidentally got from literally like the middle of my chest all the way down to my belly button, com- like a literal just like g- giant spread of yellow oil paint all over me by accident. And I didn't even notice for like an hour. How did you do that? I picked up a sculpture and was holding it against my chest in a chair and fucking with it. And like I was like carving something on it. Poor thing. And there was yellow oil paint all over the bottom of it. And I just didn't know. That sucks. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta take you to Sabres. No, I'm good. You're not. We just talked about how you're not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm chilling, okay? You are something else. I've been trying to make sculptures that are... I've been trying to work up to making life-size sculptures. That is really cool. Yeah, it's hard. I imagine. I saw some of the pictures that you posted on Facebook of the stuff you're working on. Hmm. Pretty cool. Have you talked at all about using... um, do you want to talk about that? Spray foam? Yeah, am I giving up your secrets Spray right foam insulation? Yeah. Oh, I don't really have secrets with that shit. But yeah, it's just Home Depot spray foam insulation, and I just bomb the shit just all over. I make an armature out of, like, wood and trash and shit, and then I spray foam it. Cool. It's really boring to talk about. I don't think it's boring. Isn't it so boring to talk about art mediums and, like, what you're actually doing? Literally, no. Really? What? I feel like every interview we have where we, like, accidentally veer into the uh, conversation of, like, so, like, what type of paint do you use? That's a different thing. It just goes flat. No, very different. Very different. Huh. If you're like, I use a Winsor Newton uh, artist series Series one, artist grade. Yeah, like, that's very different than being like, I go to Home Depot and I use spray foam and I put gravel in it and I mix it up and I fucking pan sear it. Like, that's cool. I, pan, I just <laughs> fucking stir fry my... Anyway, um... And what would happen if you pan-seared a little a piece of insulation? Do you think it would melt? It would melt or burn and, like, create toxic fumes that would, like, make you cough and have black soot in your nose. Oh. That's my guess. Damn. <laughs> it would probably just be, like, a burning plastic situation. You cool. ever burned plastic and then accidentally burned yourself while fucking around burning plastic? Nope. It's the absolute worst type of pain in the world. Oh, God. Yeah, that's happened to me. It happened to me so many times when I was an adolescent boy. <laughs> when I was, in, when I, back in the day, when I was, like, 12 and would, like, do things, like, light, like a, like a, I don't know. Like a Pepsi bottle I, I used fire. to play with fire, literally, when I was, like, 12. That makes sense. I did yep. too. Burning like like you like light a Mountain Dew bottle on fire for some reason, and then someone and you like try to pick it up, and like just a gob of molten plastic like lands on your like fucking shin or ankle or your hand. See, that's not relatable to me because I don't like things that smell bad. But I I was like a more of a like like Tumblr poetry burner of things. Like, I would write little notes to my future self and make them into little paper cranes and burn them in the sink. You want to hear about an embarrassing thing that I used to do? What? I used to do this when I was, like, 17, maybe. But I I would do this thing where (laughs) I would write a letter to the universe, in quotes. Oh. And it would be just probably some absolutely foolish thing. (laughs) And the whole idea was to write it and then drive, like, on the highway or something, and then throw it out the window. <laughs> That's very, like, John Green of you. It was it was supposed to be a very John Green thing, like, you know, like some kind of poetic, beautiful thing that makes you feel, like, f- unique and fulfilled or something. But really, I was just, like, littering some, like, <laughs> cringy, dumb thing I wrote. All this paper, that decomposes. Sometimes I would put them in a bottle, though. Why? I don't, because I was fucking stupid. And throw that on the highway? Yeah, or like on the road. All right, then fuck you. That's stupid then. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't you say it that bottle? it wasn't. I said I started the story saying that it was stupid. Imagine being the guy in the car behind you that just has like a Sprite bottle bounce off his car with like a little... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, hello, universe. Like, I love you. Like, <laughs> like believe in yourself. Hmm. Or some fucking, whatever dumb Is that the kind of thing, thing you wrote? 
Probably, yes. I don't no. remember exactly, but probably something to that effect. <laughs> and I no. didn't do that once. I probably did that like like a really like a good amount of times. Like, like how many times? Like five times? Maybe like ten or fifteen times. Fifteen's a lot. I used to do that a lot. And I would get other people to do it too. Like my I would get my friends to do it. Oh. <laughs> I like how you're saying like oh, but it was like just like throwing trash out of my car. <laughs> <laughs> people have done more damaging things at seventeen. I've done more damaging things when I was 17. I probably did too. Those people sitting up on the lifeguard tower there are probably having such a nice time. I know. I was looking at it. It seems really sweet. They pulled yeah. up in separate cars. Like, they met here to talk on the little lifeguard tower. Yeah. The one in the white jacket had a joint in her mouth when she was walking up. Aw. So she probably just, like, chilling and smoking on the, on the beach during sunset. That's really nice. I love a good soda water from McDonald's. <laughs> Should I complain about McDonald's? Is that fucked up? Do you think it's fucked up? Is that classist? We just ate there. Yeah. It's like the top I of don't our actually, price point. I'm not actually worrying if it's classist or not. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Nah, but I'm a McDonald's Sprite enjoyer. Ugh. Everybody online and in my life seems to think that that is like a depraved activity. <laughs> it's criminal. Drinking McDonald's Sprite. But I think it's honestly the only good soda that they offer. And it's one of the best forms Sprite has. Like, when you what? get a Sprite at the store in a bottle... Who does it's, that? It's gross. Who does that? I've literally never done that. Can't relate. Well, people do. You go to fucking or Star if you're Market at like the and pick up a Sprite. Or if you're at, like, the 99 getting dinner with, like, your grandparents and you get a Sprite. Can't relate. That's because your grandparents only get Italian food. My Grammy's Italian. Well, she's a sweetheart. <laughs> but... When you get Sprite in any of those venues, <laughs> low quality. She totally oh, get Italian. It's food. true, yeah. <laughs> Mama Mia's in Olive Garden. Olive Garden. <laughs> Theo, how's your artwork doing? I love her. She, she asks me for updates on my art, and I feel like she's one of the only people in my life that isn't an artist, but actually listens to the whole story. Like, I'll tell her what I'm doing instead of being like, that's awesome, that's really good, are you happy? And I'm like, yeah, and she's like, okay, cool. She then asks follow-up questions and, like, really wants to know more about the ins and outs of how it works and what I'm actually doing, which is really nice. It's really mm. exciting. Yeah, that's a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, you okay? Oh, yeah. I was thinking recently about my, my whole MO when somebody asks me about my art. Mm -hmm. Because... When I meet somebody new, and, like, I mean, like, maybe it's, like, a relative that I haven't seen in a while that isn't meeting a new person. Or mm -hmm. it's, like, I don't know, like, your partner's fucking, like, uncle. <laughs> or, like, some like, like someone who's, like, a random person that you're not friends with. Yeah. But is, like, somebody that you are in a... You are in a... Obligatory exchange. And a, yeah, this is like a ma this is mandatory politeness. Like you know, don't be a piece of shit. Be nice. Have fun. Be have make a conversation. Yeah. Situation, and people ask me about my art. I literally always give them a, just a baloney non-answer. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, I do a little painting here and there, and then I just immediately change the subject mm. and do not want to talk about it mm. because it's so awkward and. Um, yeah, and I don't feel like, I just feel like it would be weird, but I challenged myself the other day, and I was writing a little bit, and I did a writing exercise where I made myself actually write down some fictional answer of what I would say if I just was completely, like, completely just answered it, like, exactly... Like, legitimately? Yeah, just literally what kind of art do I make? Yeah. Because I usually, I'll maybe if I try a little bit, I'll say, yeah, I, like, draw faces a lot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that'll, that'll be all I say. And I was just thinking, because I was kind of thinking about the fact that there's probably people that I've done that to where I just didn't explain to them anything and mm -hmm. was just kind of like, meh, 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 like, and then just moved the situation along to something else. That maybe I've miss, missed some conversational opportunities where the, maybe I have done that to people that would have understood and thought it was cool and made good conversation about art. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Also, you're forgetting about the subset of people, which I think are a lot of people, who even if they didn't understand or didn't know, would be interested in asking more questions. That's true. Yeah. Something that I came across, though, that was a very relevant descriptor is that I make, I just literally very often make Catholic art. Yeah. Not Catholic. Not really. Well, maybe I am Catholic, but I'm not religious. Mm. But I make art that is in the same compositions and same figurative aesthetics as religious art on purpose because I like that and it's cool. Yeah. I don't know. Would you describe that as Catholic art though? Yeah, because the type of art that I'm talking about, which exists through many different like massive eras of time, Mm -hmm. like from like medieval flat like art of people getting stabbed with like completely straight faces. Yeah. Like getting eaten by like a dragon with make looking like mm. yeah. um for the listener all Ryan the way to really bland facial Yeah, like <laughs> like all the way up to things like high renaissance shit like Caravaggio. Yeah. Like all of those things are part of the same aesthetic tradition. Interesting. In western western Europe Catholic art, it's like almost like once we get into Eastern shit, Islamic art, Judaic stuff, or even Orthodox Russian stuff, it becomes their different aesthetic threads. You know, that's actually really intriguing. But Western Catholic is like a, to me, maybe a historian or a something would disagree and see it a lot more complexly than that. But. Hmm. I don't know. But I was thinking about that, and I was also thinking, like, oh, yeah, like, I draw faces, like, but I also do a whole series where it's just more neo-expressionist pop art, mm. which is, like, my collages. Yeah. And my sketchy yeah. stuff and my TikTok art. That's true. I characterize that in my brain as my TikTok art, but that's a stupid way of describing it to other people. But what it actually is is just, like, there's there's two answers here. It's because I think people online will like it. And also because it's a fun thing that I made. That I feel like you deserve a lot of credit for those types of art that I make too. Because Me? Yeah, because I feel like that type of stuff is informed a lot by our early collaborations. Oh. Because I used to make like collages and stuff. Like I've made many collages in my life that are maybe in that aesthetic vein. Yeah. But I feel like they took, they evolved a lot when we were collaborating and making collages and stuff together. That's actually funny, because I remember when we were making the letter project, you said to me that you considered yourself a painter and that you didn't usually make collages, so it was a big stretch for you. That was baloney. I was lying. <laughs> it's I funny to think of, because I was going to say that sounds wrong. Yeah, no. I, but you did say that. I had a big collage wave in 2018. Yeah. But it was the stupidest process in the world where I would make a bunch of shit. I would tape shit together and glue things up and do... but. Here's the stupid part, is okay. I would make things that were completely unstable uh, physically, and then I would just uh, bomb it in a laminator. <laughs> and some the laminator would get, like, jammed up, and it would get stuck in there because it was, like, too Wait, thick. like a laminating machine? Yeah. <laughs> I have a laminator that I would do this with. Oh, that's funny. And, yeah, so it would be, like, this big, like, thick, like, stupid, textured, almost 3D collage of like cardboard and glue and tape and then i would laminate it would laminated art look good did you i i thought it looked good oh cool but it was stupid why is it stupid then it sounds like it worked uh i was just ruining a lot of art and that i was making and nobody would buy it and called trial and error baby it was experimental yeah that's not stupid. You know what? I've been on your case about this lately, but I'm going to talk about it on the podcast Great. because I like to I like to berate you on the air. No, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good, um, good content. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. I mean, I love you. Okay. I do that almost every episode, though. But you can um, berate me. <laughs> it helps me be better. I try. I was going to say though. Um, hey. What? I threw a French fry from the window. Don't into give that the barrel. birds French fries. It landed in the barrel. The birds are going to go in the barrel. There's probably worse things in the barrel that they can already access. But bread blows up in their stomachs and it can kill them. One French fry is not going to kill it. You're a bird murderer. Maybe Don't I am. throw more. All right. Don't. I agree to an armistice. Where for now, <laughs> temporarily. For now, I won't kill any birds. Until no specified time, will I murder any birds? 
Um, but I'm not going to tell you when that armistice is over. I think I'll figure it out. You will. <laughs> Start killing and them. And you will not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, something that I've been on your case about privately lately okay. is you down-talking your art. Good talk. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> your facial expression. <laughs> Me down talking my art. No, I'm being. Um... Because people will ask you. This happened at um, one of the shows that you were at recently. I remember. Your, your gallery show. You I know what I'm talking talk about. about. I was talking to you about this earlier today. But I'm going to talk about it for the listener. Um, somebody asked you earlier in the night, like, what kind of art do you do? And you're like, oh, I don't know. You know, I fuck around. I do like a little bit of painting, a little bit of, you know, just whatever. Like, just kind of like a typical answer. Good. Like not super, not like non-committal, but like not, just kind of like a, uh, which implied, maybe they didn't take it this way, but the way that it sounded to me when you said it was, like it projected that you didn't want to talk about it further. Yeah, see, I agree with that, and that's something that I've been thinking about that is bad. Yeah, because the thing is, most people don't give a fuck about what they're actually saying when they're talking to a stranger, they give a fuck about the vibe. And when you're an artist and you're an entrepreneur, you're also a salesman. And if you tell somebody, even if it's a random fucking person at a family party or something, like, oh, you know, I don't know, I just do bullshit, they're going to be like, all right, you're a dumbass. <laughs> and you're embarrassed to talk about your art because you don't make a lot of money. I feel like it's how it sounds. And I do that to myself all the fucking time. Or something that I do more often is I'm like, oh, I'm an artist, but my day job is blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, then you don't make any money at your art is what you're saying. You know, because if you were making money and you weren't insecure about it, you would just say that. Sometimes that's not even true, but that's the way I think it comes off. Not you, but just like anybody. That's true. And then, and then, like, I want to say that in capitalist America, X, Y, and Z. <gasps> oh, you drank the soda water Sprite. Sorry. Why didn't yeah. you drink the. I mixed Coke, them up. I mixed Pepsi. them up. How? I'm in the passenger seat, so I thought I was. Oh, it was in your cup holder. No, it wasn't actually. I fucked up. The oh, they're actually... They're in the... <laughs> right. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> um, I forget what I was going to say. Well, I was just going to add, though, that I think the inverse is also true, so for a more optimistic take, that if someone asks you what you do and you say, I'm an artist, and then they say, oh, what kind of art do you make? And you're like, I make neo-expressionist pop art. They're going to be like, wow, what the fuck? And they're going to ask you more questions. If you come off insecure, they're going to leave it alone because well, they don't want to have an awkward interaction. Uh, yeah, you're right. As a side side thing, I'm I'm trying I'm workshopping the phrase neo expressionist pop art. Oh, did you say that before? We were recording? I did. Sorry. No, no, I didn't say that before. I said that on the recording. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, but I um, I think I need to say something better than that because I don't want to invoke, uh, Warhol New York aesthetics. I mean, true, but you're because that's not what I'm doing. You're forgetting that the people that know what neo expressionist pop art means are exactly a why small I want niche, to change a niche community. Anyway, yeah, you're right. Like the average, I'm working on it. A random sample of a person you're going to meet at a random context is not going to... Like, most people don't know art history, <laughs> which I feel like it's hard to remember. But I feel like there's, like, the the surface level that... Like, most... I feel like I feel like a lot of people... Most people know who Andy Warhol is, at least. Maybe the pop They know who part, Picasso yeah. is. They know who Da Vinci is. They know who Salvador Dali is. Salvador Dali is, I think, a little bit more. Frida Kahlo, maybe. If they know who Frida Kahlo is, they're more likely to know what that means. But Frida Kahlo is like, I feel like Frida Kahlo is when she's the gateway drug these yeah. days. Like, you know who all the bullshit ones are, like Picasso, but then once you learn about Frida, you're like, okay, now we're cooking with gas, now we're going to learn some shit. Depends. Because she's also, like, like, the, like, I feel like a lot of museums and art institutions use, like, the Frida eyebrow portrait as, like, their, like, Well, it's like a gift shoppy thing now. But it's also, like, a, we have women artists here. Here's a Frida painting. Oh, yeah. Like, it's on every sign and every, like... It's, like, like neoliberal, like, idiot stuff. Yeah, which isn't necessarily bad, because she was a pretty cool person. Well, that's why I would consider it the gateway drug. Because it would be somebody who typically is not informed about that stuff starting to be but i'm saying i don't think that she's that like you cool. think she's more than that like my description is insulting you think no oh i'm confused sorry 
I don't think she's that niche. Oh, I know. I know. I'm saying a list as she could as she could possibly be. But I'm saying that like you can casually know who Warhol is and have no fucking idea what you're talking about. But I think you can with Frida too. You think it's the same like, thing? I feel like Frida and feminism and social justice Frida is to femini- feminism and social justice as Van Gogh is to mental health. <laughs> and that like everybody knows, but nobody fucking knows. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like you true. could still you could still read some articles about it, even wow. if you know who she is. That's fucked actually, you're right. That's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> That was a that was an ev- that was a depraved hot take. <laughs> 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 it was good though. I feel bad that I I mumbled in the middle of it. That's a new it's tick true. that I have. I when I'm in the middle of making a point that I'm thinking really hard about, I stammer now. I didn't even notice you stammer. Maybe it's not even that bad. I didn't, I notice it when I do it though. I'm sure it's fine. I what get this point, point where I'm trying so hard to speak that I just like my voice just doesn't come out. Yeah, you're probably hyper. Uh, why the fuck is that plane so close to the fucking ground? What plane? That gigantic fucking plane right there. I don't see a plane. You really don't? You just missed that? Oh, whoa. What the fuck? It looks like it takes it's like right off there. from Manomet. Is that the name of that town? Yeah. Mamma, Mamma, Man. Manomet is part of Plymouth, actually. Yeah. It's not I... a separate town. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, but I was going to say, though, that I think that... <laughs> that feeling of not being valid because you're not making money from your art... I don't even want to be as like like cliche as to be like, oh, it's just capitalism, man. But it is. I mean, it is. But I feel like a more accurate way of describing it, though, is saying that that's a working class family thing, too. Because, for example, my parents don't get excited about anything I do. They do because they, like they support me and they you know want me to be happy. But they're not really impressed. Unless I made money doing whatever it was I did. Like, Which, if I'm making money, they're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, whoa, that's dope. But the thing is, like, you're right. But the reason I was saying that also about, like, I, I would call it bluffing up, and I've talked to you about it before. Oh, yeah. Is not because of you having insecurity or not about whether or not you're making money. It's about the other person. Because if you're talking to somebody and you ask them what kind of job <sighs> they do, like, think about it as somebody wasn't an artist. If you're talking to somebody and they're like, okay, picture somebody's like a model. You meet mm-hmm. somebody and they're like, I do modeling in my spare time. I feel like this is like kind of fucked up. Sorry. But I feel like most people usually think that, hear that, and they're like, okay, so you have an Instagram. Like, or it's like when someone says they casually do photography. Yeah. Like you're trying to figure out if they're full of shit or not. And I feel like people do that to <laughs> artists too. So they're going to ask you like, <laughs> what kind of art do you make? Or what, can you tell me about your modeling? And they go, oh, I don't know. It's just like with some friends. It's like, you're not a model is the first thing they think. And they change the subject. If you're an artist and you're like, yeah, I, I make art. And they're like, that's your full-time thing? Like, you don't have a day job? And you're like, yeah, but, you know, it's, like, just kind of, like, I just do, like, portrait. I draw faces. It's like, okay, so you're unemployed. I draw smiley faces. Yeah, don't fucking tell people you're unemployed. You're not. I'm saying that I think a lot of the times I'm I'm preemptively self-deprecating to Why? to take the wind out of whatever mean thing somebody could say to me. See, but the thing you're like, forgetting is I'm preemptively that- saying it, like, to be, like... This isn't right, but I think what I'm doing is I'm being like, you like you can't say like you can't shit on me, because I'm already like. But the thing that you have to remember is that a, if you were in exactly the place that you want to be, you wouldn't be anticipating that. So you're telling the person that you are, which is bad. But second, like b, in an adult world, somebody shitting on you for what you do for work is antisocial. Like, right. Well, it is like it's a douche way to behave, but people do it in very small ways. Yeah. But why would you beat them to the punch? Well, I feel like it's kind of like, I don't know, like, hmm, this is a sticky area. I'm not saying I fully agree with my reasoning. I don't mm-hmm. think my reasoning is necessarily good. But have you ever like maybe like queer people like being like, ha ha ha, I'm so gay. Mm. Or something like not that that's bad, obviously, but being like that openly around people they don't even know, just so people know. But I feel like what the fuck am I talking about? I know what you're talking about, but I feel like that's different because that is objectively not actually a bad thing. So claiming it first is kind of putting your like stake on it. It's not anything bad. I feel like sometimes it's people anticipating negative feedback. 
Yeah, but it's still a positive thing to claim that first. If you're claiming, I feel like it's more akin to being like, like in the middle of making a point saying, I don't know, I'm fucking dumb. Me. Yes. I do that all the time. Yeah, cut it out. <laughs> you don't have to believe it, and it doesn't have to be true, but you should be telling people that you're the shit all the time. Especially if people you. think that you're not. But when I'm in person and I'm talking to a random fucking person, completely outside of any artistic or professional especially setting, them. especially I them. fucking, yeah, I guess you're right. The people who think that you're full of shit the most are the ones that you should talk up to the most. No. Because mm. first of all, they'll be the easiest to trick if you're not telling uh, them. Yeah, and you're second right. of all, they're going to be the ones that are going to tear you down. Mm. So why should you tear yourself down first? You should just say that you're hot shit first. Yeah. Do you think I should just say that, that I'm hot shit? You don't have to even explain. <laughs> I, am, I was obviously just being, I was being facetious when I asked you that. I'm sorry. That was a bullshit answer. I agree with you, though. You're right. That I should actually... I'm sorry. I, would, I, I just gave you a piece of shit answer. You're not a piece of shit. Well, I just get, I was, I took the wind out of what you were saying with my facetiousness. Are you doing it right now? No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a nice person because you were just making a, 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 a positive point to make me feel better and I gave you a snide answer. I, sn- I snarked, I snarked you. That's okay. I'm Sorry. not, I wasn't trying to make you feel better. I was trying to, um, win this debate to be fair so oh okay <laughs> also I, I i agree with you though i love you love you it's not even about you specifically though i give this feedback to anyone as something that i've been mm. trying to practice too where mm. um like i've been making a point lately to not say shit like like for example i work in an art museum now instead of saying things like Oh, I just work customer service. Or like, I just do ticketing. I say, I work in the museum field. Because that's true. Mm. Or instead of being like, I work I work five hours a week at a nonprofit. Like, I'm a corporate art lending manager. Because that's true. You know what I mean? Like, mm. there's a way to present it half glass, glass half full and glass half empty. <laughs> and if you're <laughs> coming off, like, if someone asks you what you do and it's your what you spend like 24 hours a day, seven days a week doing something that you love. It's something that you're committed to. And it's something that is your career. And you're talking about it. Like you're ashamed and embarrassed. That's the worst fucking thing you can do. I know you're right. Stop making me feel bad. You're missing. You're not talking to me anyway. You're talking in generally. (laughs) Do you think I should tell people that I'm a, a, a TikTok micro influencer and podcaster? You could. Maybe I shouldn't say micro-influencer. Yeah. What well, does that mean? What is a micro-influencer? Does that mean you have, like, 200 followers? Or it means that you mean have, you... like, B-list brand deals. Oh. Like, you're oh. not, like, Nike, Victoria's Secret. You're, like, Smartwater. Actually, Are no, you Smartwater, kidding me? Smartwater? Smart... Yeah. <laughs> you're Dasani. You know what I was thinking about trying to figure out how we could try to get sponsorships for this? Like, imagine if we tried to get a sponsorship from, like, a local business. Like, really local. Oh, you know, that might work. Like, where we were like, hey, like, we'll fucking shout you out at the beginning, middle, and end of, of five shows for $200. Yeah. There, there's, I don't know. Is that stupid? Should I not say this on the podcast? Should we talk about this off air? Maybe. But I was just thinking that that could be a good direction because obviously if we, like, hit up, like, hey, Liquitex Paint. <laughs> Sponsor get, us, like they would be like, no, you pee on from me undies. Me I want, undies. I want a discount code for me undies. Oh, man, see, yeah. I think if we really played up the like art couple thing, we could get a me undies product um, code. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does that mean? You know me undies. I know me undies. They yeah. have like his and hers matching undie sets. Right, that's true. Did you know I've actually contemplated subscribing to me undies to get the underwear. I once um, got a MeUndies undies. How were they? They were really fucking nice. They were really expensive, though. Sure. Well, actually, no, they're not. I just, my budget for underwear is like. <laughs> just like the, the bar is in hell. Yeah. Or it's no, like it's only buy expression. from the Target discount section. Mm. That's the wrong expression. What, it's too the, harsh for my underwear. The bar choices. is in hell. No, that just means that that would imply that like you purchase like, terrible underwear. 
But yeah, you were saying hell? you were saying that you want to buy cheap underwear. I just used the wrong You're idiom. You're saying I use ugly underwear? If I intended to use that idiom, then you maybe that would have been what I meant. The bar is in hell for my my ass. <laughs> that you got me. <laughs> That's exactly what I fucking why the fuck would I <laughs> No. Of course not. That's obviously of course not what I mean. Imagine if someone sent you an underwear pic and you just said the bar is in hell. <laughs> The bar is in hell. <laughs> what would that mean? Like, the bar is in hell for, for me? For underwear picks? Like, you could send me the most fucking horrible <laughs> underwear pick, like, and I'd be like, hell yeah, because the bar is in hell. Or would I be like, what would that even mean? It would be, like, ridiculously offensive, but really ambiguous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like what? The like, bar? maybe the bar is in hell, like... Like you, like you think, think this, this is, is hot? You think this is hot? The bar must be in hell for you. Because hell is for hot. For what you consider it's hot in hell. good. But yeah. yeah. That makes no fucking sense. What, what I said? No, what I said. The bar is in hell. In res- like somebody sends you a picture. Oh, Brian! Somebody sends you a picture and you say the bar is in hell. I lean on the horn. <laughs> All right? It was a fucking accident. Everybody knows it was in hell. <laughs> Don't make eye contact with any of those people. Who? The people up on the lifeguard stand on the smoking a joint for the sunset. Oh, they're pretty chill about that. I wonder if you scared them. Maybe I did a little bit. Imagine being high in the dark and a car horn beeps at you from right next to you. They probably didn't even know we were in this car. I'm I'm not worried about it, dog. You're a little worried about it. I kind of want to go down on the beach. I think that'd be wicked loud. After we stop recording, let's do that for a minute. All right. I gotta pee anyway. You can't pee on the beach. I'm going to. It's like, you're wicked visible. No, it's nighttime. Why do you always want to pee outside? I don't. I just am, am exploiting my privilege to be able to do that. I guess that's fair. Someone's got to do it. Well, no, nobody has to do it, but I am. So if I can just conveniently pee on a wall real quick and it doesn't hurt anybody, I'm going to do it. Someday you're going to get arrested. <laughs> Uh, that would be, I would literally end it all. I, I would have to like jump off a building and die if that happened to me. No, you would, if you got arrested. I would arrested, literally never be able to, to live that down if I got arrested no, for public no, urination. No, 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 no. If you got arrested for public urination and then committed suicide, <laughs> I would never be able to live that down. Are you fucking serious? Holy shit. I would be so mad at you. Can you imagine? I would go to your funeral and spit in your coffee. I would never do that. Also, just sorry. for the, just so everyone knows. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was like your obituary? Sorry, this is getting too dark. Everybody in your life would be so mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, you know how we we're talking yeah. about being more professional on the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I said. The podcast would die if we became if we tried to do that. That's true. Anyway, that's we're for candid. the meta episode. There's a uh, we're about two or three minutes to an uh, to an hour. Oh, nice. Do you want to record for like one or two more minutes and then wrap this up? You only want to do an hour? Yeah, yeah. I think we should do an hour. Really? I think this has been a banger episode. Pretty good. Maybe we could keep recording after for a different episode. We didn't need to get we have into some of the stuff we were going to talk about. Exactly why we should just do a different one. Really? Because we got interviews just coming back up. Back to back. Yeah, so we should continue stacking interviews, getting them and bagging them up, bagging them up and sending them out. I wish we had an apartment. It's okay. Remember your Don't old Don't talk apartment? about that on the podcast. Why? Oh, yeah. we Why? What about my old pod, our old apartment on the podcast? We used to just make tea and record to like... One in the morning. Did we? There were a couple times. We did that a few times. You're right. The NFT episode, we did that. The what the fuck is an NFT episode? That was so funny. <laughs> You're sad now? Are I you... don't want to talk about NFTs or cryptocurrency. We're not talking about NFTs and cryptocurrency. <laughs> I don't want to. I was referencing don't a make previous me. episode where we did. Then don't make me talk about Zillow and houses. What? You make me talk about Zillow and houses when sometimes. When the fuck do I ever you talk, talk about You talk to me Zillow? about house prices and Zillow. When? And you show me a pic, a screenshot from Zillow. When was the last time I showed you a screenshot from Zillow? I don't fucking know, but I, I don't like it when Facebook you do it. I use Facebook Marketplace and I don't talk to you about it. Because I got mad or yeah. something? Really? You don't like to talk about Zillow? I hate Zillow. 
It's a trigger. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 30 seconds left, and this will be a 60-minute episode. Any final thoughts? Yeah, hey. You're counting down what? I don't know why I'm counting down, because I keep staring at the timer. Also, I have to pee. That's oh, why that's I'm why rushing you. Pee. That's why I'm so stressed relax. out. Um, I'm not chill right now because I have to pee. You have a certain kind of not chill when you have to pee, though, where it's like you're not mad or you're not like in a bad mood. You're just like going really fast. I'm agitated. Like you, got, you gotta run. I get agi- agi- agitated. Agitprop. Agitprop? I think that means agitation propaganda. Like propaganda meant to agitate the viewers. That's us. That's us. <laughs> Art agitprop. Uh, do you want to pause this or stop it? E- either one is fine. We can discuss it after we pause it. I guess we could stop it. Okay. I feel like it's fucked up when we're like, we have more to say. We're not going to tell you for a week. Ha ha ha. Well, that's why we were cooking them in. Cliffhanging them. How are we hooking them in when they're already an hour into the podcast? Probably like a year and a half. We're keeping them, keeping them guessing. Keeping them guessing. So never let never them know, know our, your next that's move. That's right. Never let them know your next move. All right. It would be really oh. funny if you ended it right when we said never let them know your next move. Never let them know your next move. <sighs> we do <laughs> it though. Bye. So.